I'm going to do a video for something that I've had sitting on my desk for a very long time. And I actually shot a video for this and eh, I didn't really like the way it turned out. So uh, I'm just kind of using that as like a rough framework and I'm reshooting it. Uh, unfortunately, my Canon S100 died again. Uh, it's uh, what I've shot all the previous videos with. And uh, yeah, it's got a stuck lens again, and it's had it like three times in a row. So that's kind of annoying, and it's out of warranty now, so I'm going to see if they'll fix it for free, because it's the same damn problem. So uh, if I sound and uh, the video looks a little different, it's because I'm shooting it on my iPhone, so it's going to be a little shaky, because I don't have a tripod mount on my iPhone, and I usually use my tripod when I'm shooting these. Uh, so today I'm going to look at this uh, Coyote Point uh, Equalizer E650 SI. Um, this is a load balancer. Um, they make several different models. Uh, I think this is the biggest one. They may make a larger one, but there's like a 250, a 350, and a 650, and maybe others, I can't remember. Um, so on the front we've got a uh, serial port, which is a DIN style connector. Oh, it's like an old Mac. Uh, external, which is actually Ethernet. Uh, and these, uh, the 20 Ethernet ports here, they're all gigabit. Um, this product is kind of an example of um, something that's partially custom and partially standard. Uh, normally when you get uh, kind of unusual networking appliances usually when they have uh, you know more than like four ports uh, for Ethernet uh, you get into custom boards and it's not a standard motherboard uh, this one's kinda unique in that it is actually a somewhat standard motherboard but they've actually put a separate module inside the case which we'll see in a minute uh, it's it's pretty unique um, I haven't seen one like this yet uh, like I said, it's usually either custom or standard. It's not a mix of both. So uh, I'm going to get this flipped around. Now we can see what the uh, the back looks like. Uh, you've got a standard uh, 1U power supply. Although this one's a little wider than the kind of flex ones or whatever they call them. And these two ports were covered originally. I um, had to take them off. They had... Um, security bits on them and I just kind of whacked them with the screwdriver or no I drilled them out and then uh, drilled out the little peg on the Torx bit and then just took out the screws uh, it blocks a VGA port and two USB ports there are actually more ports on this motherboard as we'll see but uh, those are the ones that are covered and you'll notice something doesn't quite line up here if this is a regular PC motherboard Everything should be on this side. Why is this one way over here? I don't know why, but it is. And that's what makes this one sort of custom. It is a standard motherboard made by Asus, but <laughs> this particular model, they s decided to stick ports way over here, so you can't actually use it in a regular case, which is kind of annoying. With the lid off, you can see the kind of hybrid design of this thing. Uh, there's the standard ATX motherboard, although, as I said, it's got the weird ports. You can see that there's PS2 ports and a VGA port all the way over there. And a normal ATX power supply and a fan setup, which is typical for one new case. But on the front here, there's a whole other module. This is a separate board that controls all the Ethernet ports. And there's a smaller board right here that uh, is basically just a, an adapter to give you the nice front ports. So you can see that there's a serial cable and an ethernet cable running along. And uh, yeah, that's the basic layout of the thing. Um, there are two cards installed. This is a PCI, a 64-bit PCI um, encryption card. And this is a hardware bypass dual port ethernet card that has relays to uh, sever the connection if the, there's an issue with this. This board uses the same chipset, uh, the 3000 series, as the uh, AEP Nutella that I, I tore down previously, uh, which is kind of good because the processor in this is better. 
than the ones that they use this is an actual Xeon as opposed to the core twos that were in the Nutella and uh, when I'm done shooting this video I'm going to take the chip out put in that board uh, to have a bit beefier uh, computer uh, I'm probably just going to sell that board though uh, there's also two gigs, I believe, of ECC, ECC memory. Yep, one gig, and there's two of them, and uh, four slots, which is typical for this chipset. Uh, this particular board has a slot for a remote management module, which isn't installed. Uh, standard ES1000 uh, video uh, chipset from ATI, very basic. I think it's like four megs. Uh, this motherboard has four serial ATA connectors, which are not used. It actually has, if you can see this vertical board here, um, this is a parallel ATA uh, disk on module. It's either one or two gig, I can't actually remember right now. Um, other than that, there's not much on this board, uh, although <laughs> you can see that the setup they have here is quite unique in that they have a network card inside the case running ethernet cable through the case to the front which is very unusual uh, the one on the left goes to the front uh, external jack and the one on the right actually goes over to uh, this switch now this switch with its very easily removed heat sinks is actually a bought in product um, it's made by, if I can, oh yeah, Interface Master. Uh, Interface Master, I believe, also makes the network card. Um, they uh, make kind of custom solutions and very high-end uh, network uh, units because uh, most, most of them deal with uh, bypassing, but this is one of the few products I could find that doesn't involve relays. Um, this one connects via USB to the motherboard and Ethernet. Now, the USB connection, I'm not too sure. I have plugged it into my computer and it detects it. Uh, it doesn't gain any Ethernet ports or anything. So my guess is this is status monitoring or uh, it's allowing it to control the um, load balancing through the actual hardware. Uh, presumably, it sends commands via USB to the board. Uh, there's a little uh, bit of flash ROM and uh, an Atmel microcontroller down here. Uh, the board is fed via um, this unique connector. Uh, it looks like a normal one, but it's actually uh, a weird pinout. It's uh, 5 volt, 12 volt, and 3.3 volt in the ground, which is a little unusual. Uh, so that, that means this power supply is not exactly a standard power supply. Uh, it does have the normal 4 pin and um, ATX power connectors. Uh, nice um, copper heatsink. This thing. This is one of the most annoying pieces of a case I have ever found. This originally went in here and it clamped the cards in in a way that you'd think, oh, well, you just, it, it pulls the whole thing out. You take the riser and the two cards out, which is what I think it was ori originally designed for. And it like clipped in down here. The problem is, because this company put an Ethernet card in it, these ports hang underneath the case. The connectors hang underneath the case. So it wedges it in on this side, and it's clipped in on the back. So this thing took me like 10 minutes to get this stupid piece of metal out of there. And yeah, it's never going back in there because it's just ridiculous. Um, as for reusability, uh, you can actually use this system as is. Um, I booted um, FreeBSD, uh, specifically PFSense. Uh, I think I had a Hackintosh build running on this too, uh, just for fun. You know, obviously it's not very practical. Um, the one catch is with, at least with PFSense, is that it doesn't actually see all these extra ports. And I believe the software they're using is custom that prevents it from, uh, you know, it's not a standard USB interface to this thing. So they must be using something fancy to, to talk to this thing. Um, I believe it does actually function normally as a switch, though. If you actually just give it power and plug in um, 
Ethernet cables to the front. I believe it does just act as a gigabit switch. It just doesn't have any of the fancy features. The build quality on this is actually quite nice. They've uh, This was clipped on with a nice wire clip. Uh, this is a power, um, an adapter from Molex to this micro connector to feed power to this um, parallel ATA uh, disk on module that's used to boot the device. Um, the interesting thing about this is that I plugged it into my standard um, USB adapter and it almost caught fire. It was shorting out. Uh, I have no idea why. I understand that these use a different interface um, because my other, the uh, Supermicro board I have specifically says uh, there's a, the, a port only for flash modules. But, I don't know, it's a little weird. It must be some weird convention where they run a power line where it shouldn't be or something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, I even tried giving it power and it didn't work properly. Uh, so I've not actually been able to mount this on, on my computer. Although I might give it a shot on the Super Micro board. Um, I've tried booting this. One problem is it won't recognize the key, my USB keyboard. The problem is most likely um, the legacy USB setting in the BIOS, which I can't change. Um, sometimes it boots up and says the keyboard is detected, sometimes it doesn't. It still hasn't let me really do anything with it. Uh, so I'm going to probably take it out of the case and try the PS2 port since I bought a cheap uh, PS2 keyboard for just such an emergency. Um, other than that, um, the system itself doesn't have that much use. Uh, assuming you can get it to log in, it does use a lot of power. It pulls like 100 watts and it's very loud. Uh, obviously you could replace all these 40 millimeter fans with something like say Noctua's and it would make a lot less noise, but you're still looking at a pretty high power draw. Then again, when you take into account the fact that you're getting a server of whatever type you need and a switch, it's not terrible, so um, it may not be uh, such a bad idea to pick one of these up if you need something that doesn't need a hard drive specifically because there's no space in this case to mount a hard drive. So if you're, you know, want to use it as a really expensive router or something like that, uh, expensive in terms of power cost, uh, this thing actually only cost me about twenty dollars on eBay. Um, yeah, like I said, it's limited use. It, it, I just find this one particularly interesting because of the weird arrangement where they actually have Ethernet cable running through the case and this weird kind of hybrid custom and standard setup they have. Although, like I said, this one's kind of not really uh, standard with its weird ass ports all the way over on the side. Uh, I would have actually probably kept this motherboard for something if uh, if not for that. I've extracted the processor and taken off all the thermal grease. Uh, as you can see, it's a 2.4 gigahertz uh, Xeon. Uh, it's the 30, 3060. Um, the uh, processor itself doesn't support uh, ECC memory. So I don't think the ECC memory on the motherboard is actually being taken advantage of. Uh, my understanding is you have to have support for both uh, the chipset and the motherboard for it to be used. Uh, it's a 1066 bus, uh, dual core, uh, nothing too special, uh, no hyper threading, no turbo, nothing like that. But, you know, it's decent enough. Uh, it's a 65 watt part, so um, it's not exactly low power. This is the dual port uh, Ethernet card. It's an Interface Masters 2352. Um, it's got two controllers, and I believe under there it's a the little heatsink. It's a um, PCI bridge because I believe the controllers themselves are PCI, and this bridges it to PCI Express. Uh, it's got two voltage regulator modules on it, which are pretty rare, uh, and it's got this header connector at the top, which has uh, just a two-wire uh, connection running all the way over to here which is the front panel. So I'm not really sure what that's for. It's a little strange because they're already running Ethernet and serial to it. So I'm not sure what this is actually for. Um, maybe just some 
you know what? It could be some kind of power uh, detection, but you'd think it'd be able to do that through the uh, the bus. Um, it's a little weird. I'm not really sure. Uh, unlike other ones I've seen, this one doesn't have a super cap on it. So I'm not really sure how this is supposed to flick the relays unless they're default off uh, into the disconnect state if there's no power. And if the power goes out, it needs to flip all the relays so they short the two, two Ethernet ports together. Uh, it's a little weird. I, I, I'm not really sure what the purpose of this is, to be honest. Um, this motherboard doesn't have, or no, sorry, it does have dual port Ethernet. So it's weird, unless they're simply using this to have enough room to plug in the connectors, which seems kind of crazy considering this is a high-end card with bypassing and they're not using it. So I, I really don't know what the purpose of it is. Um, it confuses me, but hey, enterprise networking sometimes does. Uh, the other card is um, <clears throat> labeled uh, HFE1 slash E1. It's also got a serial number down here. Uh, it's got a Xilinx chip on it, a PGA, and another Xilinx chip, and you know some flash and RAM, uh, a couple of voltage regulators. Nothing too special. Uh, this is detected by FreeBSD. I saw it show up in the in the list. I don't know if it's actually able to use it for um, actual decryption, uh, but it does actually see the card, so I don't know. It may automatically take advantage of it. You can see there's space for another um, uh, voltage regulator or something in a, another piece of flash memory. Not too interesting, and it's PCI, so you can't really use it on a modern computer. The best feature. Uh, you're going to hear some beeping because I have the power supply hooked up to this uh, generic tester just because I don't have a processor installed in the motherboard so uh, I'm just forcing it on but check this out oh yeah amazing on the back you can see just how ridiculous this is these are all surface mount LEDs there's like 50 of them and this thing gets really warm too so they're running a lot of current through these things too so it's I don't know why they put so many LEDs and obviously didn't um, drop them enough to not pull enough power to just get ridiculously hot. I'd hate to think of how much power that thing actually uses on a daily basis just lighting up that stupid paw. Um, you can hear that the motor on the uh, on this fan is pretty dead. Uh, there's also a fan on the other end too but uh, this one I think is the dead one. Well. That's about it for this board, uh, or this whole system, I should say. Uh, kind of unique, but unfortunately not much use. So I think I'm just going to extract some parts out of it and chuck it away, because this board can't be used in anything else, and you know I'll get what parts I can get out of it. I'll probably sit, hang on to this thing just to experiment with it, but yeah, not much. Uh, even at a low price... It's not really worth it because uh, you can't really use the case for anything else. It's custom. You can't use a motherboard for anything else. It's custom. Everything's custom despite it being a standard ATX case. And the processor's not worth much. Uh, it's kind of got standard memory. So, eh, kind of a boring uh, purchase in terms of usability, but uh, interesting. While well, disassembling, I realized that there are two USB connections, and there are two of the funky power connections. So it looks like you can actually run two of these boards in one case. So presumably they make a 2U unit with uh, more ports. As you can see, it's got uh, several chips on it. Um, these are physical LAN controllers, uh, layer 2 controllers and whatnot. Um, the big one being a 24 port one, uh, which is a little odd considering there's only 20. And um, the other ones are physical layer controllers. So I guess they just wanted to leave out the last four ports. Um, there's space for another 8-pin uh, uh, dip package. And not much else. It's just a little... Uh, 
that's an EEPROM under there and some power supply stuff and on the back you can see it's uh, labeled CP300 it's also um, branded uh, Coyote Point on it so uh, maybe this is a custom build for them uh, I can't seem to really find any information on this particular board online so it is possible this is just purely custom I do like the uh, little grid underneath the uh, big BGA package I haven't really seen that before I think that's a first for me but yeah it's basically just a switch on a card nothing too fancy pretty intense board though it's probably like 10 layers or something but eh, there you go oh and I figured out what the um, the two pin connector going from the ethernet card to the uh, uh, front panel is it's actually connected to the yellow light uh, I followed the circuit so uh, that explains what that's doing it's just lighting up the LED from the card this is the disk on module uh, as you can see it's got a little master jumper switch power connector it's an a pacer uh, one gig uh, they probably make a two gig judging by the size uh, or maybe four gig judging by this uh, number of um, empty pads yeah, it's got a little uh, controller on it and just one gig of flash in one chip and it's a standard uh, ID connection although like I said it did try to fry itself when I connected it so uh, I think it is like slightly non-standard for a disk on module but and it's also a uh, 90 degree which is a little odd 